Celtic are back at the Olympic Stadium in Rome this week after a four-year break and nothing but a one will do if we're to keep alive the dream of European football after Christmas. This is Tino with the Countdown to Kickoff and I'm joined here by James. James, your initial thoughts ahead of this one on Tuesday? Got to go for it, you? you know, I see a lot of chat and hear a lot of chat that, you know, like, oh, well, just, you know, don't risk anyone, you know, focus on the league. You're, you're still having a chance. you got to go for it. So it could be an exciting game. Yeah. Uh, not the ideal prep at the weekend there. Pretty disappointing. Uh, one each draw against Motherwell. Potentially an injury to Yang. We're waiting to hear an update on that. Um, Talio plays, you know, some part on Saturday, not in the squad for Europe. Mike Navrocki, not in the squad for Europe. Maeda injured, as we know. Hatati injured, as we know. I don't want to build doom and gloom, but let's get that kind of stuff out of the way. It's, it's not great prep, is it? You know, you would, you'd have hoped to have bounced back for the international break with a confidence boosting win, but we didn't get that. Yeah, I mean, we did speak last week about the international break breaking our, um, our momentum there from the Aberdeen game. Um, it didn't half, you know, uh, just really stilted on Saturday. You know, just a lot of stuff, lack of imagination, lack of drive, lack of someone taking charge. You don't want that. But, you know, I think more than Ange, Rodgers does look ahead beyond the, the, the game at hand. He looks a, a, a wee bit further ahead. And I wonder if that's rubbing off on the players a wee bit that it's cost us on Saturday but might benefit us tomorrow night. That's my happy outlook on it. Do you know, and it's, and it's, a, it's a valid outlook. I think um, for somebody to tell you before the weekend you're going to draw a mother but go and get a, a phenomenal result in Italy, you take that all day long. I didn't the mix that your draw didn't cost you anything given yesterday yeah and obviously we can't account for what Rangers do or don't do when they play Aberdeen Aberdeen try harder against Rangers remember so that's that's yeah. another story uh, but there's no doubt that Brendan Rodgers was looking ahead to an extent and that was indicated by the fact that Alistair Johnson got rested and I think that's exactly what it is there's no injury he was on the bench and I think he was just being smart there with the fact that Johnson had travelled with the Canadian national team just got back on Friday and he chose the opportunity to start Tony Ralston and that's what Tony Ralston and others Others like him are there for. Yeah, and I suppose add to that, um, to back that up, Palmer did start because he's not going to play on Tuesday, so there's no point resting him. Um, and yeah, I think Ralston's a, an able deputy. I mean, even towards the, the end, he puts in a great cross for the byline and it should be scoring. It was Yang. Um, it should be scoring it. Was oh. it Yang? Oh, he should be scoring it. So Ralston definitely still has a, a big part to play for Celtic for me. Yeah, no doubt. And it does allow that that rest for Johnson in between these heavy international breaks and otherwise um, before we get into the personnel and what it might or might not look like and that's that's going to be interesting particularly when we get to the wingers there have been some suggestions in various places online and, and amongst their own group chats uh, Stevie Keenan that we know well has suggested that a 3-5-2 might be the option here obviously we're going out to to Italy you know Lazio at home they'll really need to come and go for it if, if they want to qualify and, I, and I'm sure they'll do that despite Italian team's been renowned for how they set up defensively at times. Do you see that being an option? Do you think Rodgers will go away from his very much tried and tested 4-3-3 and he's something like a 3-5-2? Yeah, I mean, the 4-3-3 the and the way he deploys his 4-3-3 in Europe is very measured and calculated. You know, it's not a, a wide open formation. Um, but we maybe just don't have the, the luxury of that patience. You know, we've got to go for it. And in particular... If you're going to win, you want to win with two clear goals and really put yourself in a in a position. So I'm, I'm very open to it. My biggest issue is I don't know how well Owen Kyogo play together. I mean, they're not a pairing. They're not, you know, a, a pairing where it's like two strikers really complement each other. They're both very different. Um, so I'd be more confident if it was, for example, a, a Jack and Marcus and, and Kyogo maybe, but that, and I, I don't mean to, to, that to disparage Oh, I just don't see anything from the two of them playing together that tells me that, you know, we've got you know, a bag, bar load of goals from that pairing. You never know, though, because they've not really been uh, tied together. It's, it's it's usually an emergency purposes we use them at the moment. And even then, it seems Kyogo comes deep when O comes on. He, he comes and fetches carries. So they're almost like a 1-1 one, one rather than a, than a two side by side. Um, I mean, it could certainly cause problems for Lazio because you're, you're putting them in different positions with your, uh, Kyogo's ability to break the lines and, you know, short runs and one touches and stuff and oh a bit more physical so um, I think we have to be a bit imaginative uh, tomorrow night because you know it's all there to, all there to win yeah back in the day uh, 90s and certainly further back than that you'd see the old fashioned little and large yeah. uh, striking duos like, let's just fire it long up to the big guy <laughs> get knocked downs in Kyogo even Son Larson yeah. Larson Larson as well 
So that's what we should do. We should just get uh, scales and catavacers to fire up to O. He'll chest it into the path of Kyogo and he'll smash it into the back of the net. Job done. Um, so yeah, so regardless of personnel, I mean, I've got to be honest with you, I think it's good to have an option to vary it up. Um, and it's certainly a valid discussion. I actually don't see him moving away from the 4-3-3. Certainly from the outset, it might depend on how the game goes. And if we're chasing it, we absolutely have to win. Nothing but a win will keep us in Europe and then we can worry about what happens in the last day. But we have to win of our own accord first and foremost. And I think he will start with what he knows and with what the players know. And then if he needs to roll the dice and throw O up top next to Kyogo or, or something like that, he might do. So on that basis, um, the the goalie and back four will most likely be as, as you'd expect. It'll be Joe Hart and goals. Uh, not a man for coming for the crosses. We're going to cover that more Big in the style. weekly show, which we're recording after this, but not a man for the, the crosses. Certainly not these days. Uh, Alistair Johnson will be right back. Greg Taylor will be left back. Not a man for going up against big guys at corners as well, but that's a separate discussion. And Carter Vickers and Skills will be your centre-halves. What about the midfield? Odin Thiago uh, home got a chance at the weekend, but he never took it, did he? No, and yourself and Joe were talking about this in the, the post-match. You're going to get it from O, Yang, um, sorry, home, Yang, I suppose, O to a degree as well. Anyone who's in the development camp, you're going to see like Yang, you know, last week, dynamite, or two weeks, two weeks ago, dynamite, and then just really quite tame um, on Sunday. Same for home, he's, he's come on um, and really shown he's, he's got something, there's, there's no denying that, but it just takes time for that to become a consistent performance. So f- with that in mind, you can't really rule him out but he's he's not cemented his place by any stretch of the imagination yeah two million project players James by their definition will be consistently inconsistent that's just what you're going to get from these guys these I call them these maybe players you know you just yeah. don't know they might be superstars they might be on the road outcome January or, or shortly after and I think Yang epitomised that yep I made that point to Joe brilliant against Aberdeen very sketchy against Murrow and if fit you've no idea what he could bring against Lazio he could be a match winner or he could be non-existent and that's just the gamble you take. I have a feeling, based on nothing, that he might use this opportunity to do the double pivot with the water. So rather than go full 3-5-2 and change your whole formation and your shape, just go a wee bit more robust within your existing 4-3-3 generally speaking. But rather than have McGregor and two guys sitting in front of him, have McGregor sitting with the water and O'Reilly ahead of them. Meaning that in transition, if you do find yourself going forward, if you're in the offensive McGregor can go and join that attack mm-hmm. and leave Iwata protecting but otherwise Iwata and McGregor would protect it all other times what do you think of a, uh, an option like that? Personally I think that can work but we didn't see anything of Iwata at the weekend so I think we would have done if he was going to go with that um, I think you could, you could see something like Bernardo coming back in you know Rodgers has got that um, in his locker to bring someone in out the cold you know he's not he's in cold storage or anything but he's, he's certainly slipped down the pecking order so you could be looking at McGregor with uh, Bernardo and, and O'Reilly. Um, it feels, but then you know, to go against Mon Argument, he didn't feature as well. So uh, it's it's a tough one now because you're really saying, I want Hatati in there and that's, that's obviously not going to happen. So it, it tells you all about where you're at just now that you've just no idea what's yeah. happening. I'm not saying you should always be able to predict the team, but you should be able to get pretty close and it should be pretty settled. And it's not settled at this moment in time and We've been unable to find a solution since Rio Hattai has gone out. You're absolutely right to point out that Iwata never featured in that double pivot on Saturday, but had we gone with a double pivot against Motherwell, you'd have lost your mind It'd be right. <laughs> at the prospect. So One one in the six was bad enough. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't the time to try that. But now listen, it's still a question mark eh, over what he does in the centre and, and tomorrow's still a puzzler. So let's see how that plays out. The, the striking options, we know it will be Kyogo. Um, but who is going to be next to him so we've got this situation in the wings no Palma suspended no Maeda suspended and injured no Abada still injured to, until December at some point no Marco Tullio not in the European squad Yang is obviously picked up some sort of knock towards the end of the game how serious it is or not we don't know leaving just James Forrest and Mikey Johnson beyond that it is, it is madness <laughs> this is what we're coming out with but that's where we're at it's like a time machine a really bad time machine um, you're still looking at that as, uh, like you say, not even to give you options off the bench to be starting for you. I, I mean, I would say it's this period, we've got it in wingers like we had for certain halves at the start of the season. You can't go and sign another four, you know, three or four wingers. We've, we've got the guys you counted there are all going to. Seven. Seven. But the, the guys you've counted who can't play, they're all going to be there, thereabouts, shouting for a, a first team start. Yeah. So that, you know, injuries and suspensions. That can happen to any team, um, and I don't think there's any wild indiscipline that's, that's caused the suspension. So it's not like you need to learn any lessons there. 
and the guys who are just genuinely injured, you know, that's that is bad luck. You can't sign to to mitigate that. I think we signed enough wingers, um, irrespective of our, our constant chat about the project side of things. So yeah. we are where we are, um, and I think it's going to be along the lines of I think Yang will start if he's fit. Um, not sure why, given he wasn't very good on Saturday. Uh, you just hope he can dig it out. Um, and you'll be pleased to hear I go with Mikey. <laughs> By default, um, I'm delighted if Mikey Johnson gets a start because it just gives him a real chance to prove or not if he's capable. I know it's Lazio, it's a tough game away from home and that's a tall order to ask anybody. But if Mikey Johnson's going to be good enough for Celtic, he'll need to go and impress at that level. He's very much on a almost a game-by-game -game trial, both by fans and by his manager, actually, because everyone's just looking to say, all right, we know you've got the talent, had the talent, threatened to show the talent. It's now or never. And I'm a huge fan of his, um, but he needs to prove it. And, I, you know, he came on at the weekend there and done some okay stuff and some not so okay stuff. Yeah, but he won the penalty and he put one in Yang's head. You know, he, he gave Celtic enough to win that game if, if they decided to take it. So um, I'm really... Very unsure if, if Mikey is ever going to make it, but I'll never find out if we don't play him in football games. Yeah, so we might, might be just about to find out at the Olympic Stadium. Um, and I think Yang would be the, the pairing. The shout for James Forrest, of course, is the experience shout. Um, particularly if Rodgers is looking to keep Celtic in the game, you know, in the first half at least, first 20, 25 half hour beyond. And James Forrest will do that. I, my, my pushback on, on my own suggestion is that I don't actually want a winger that's going to play safe. I want a winger that's going to go for it and, and create opportunities and get to bylines and take guys on and and actually do what James Forrest done last time out four years ago and grabbed a goal against Lazio. I don't think this James Forrest has got that in his locker, but I'd be pleasantly surprised if so. It works better the other way, doesn't it? Somebody that's going to help you go for it in the first 60 minutes, get your two goals and then bring James A on to keep it safe and retain the ball and do what we know he can do in this, you know, iteration of uh, James, James's style you know and it, it really has changed as time goes on and that, that happens to all players you know um, I think if you put him on from the start I think you're saying we're not going for it we're going to try and sneak a couple of goals uh, that's behind the sofa stuff If it goes a 2 one you'd take it though I'd take a 2 one for anything I just mm. think that's going to get it I think uh, it's going to be really telling as to what approach Rodgers takes I think it'll be quite fascinating actually what has shape is, what his lineup is, what the personnel are, you know, that he goes with and how he intends to go for it. I don't think he's a manager at any point in his career that's decided to sit in. You know, we've gone to the new camp, we've gone to uh, is it part of the Prince, is that where PSG yeah. still play? All that stuff. We've gone to big arenas against big teams and we've still gone for it. I don't see him changing that. How'd it work out? Didn't work out very well. Didn't work, Didn't work out very well. Took a couple of real tankings uh, and the Atletico one, it's a bit of a Bit of a false picture given the Maida oh, sending off. So let's let's just forget that ever happened. My, my stay for okay with that. didn't happen. Um but yeah, so he's got a real issue on the wings and I know sometimes on the show here we look for a, a fall guy or a bogeyman or somebody to blame. There's nobody really to blame for the the lack of options. Palm and Maida suspended, can't do anything about that. A bad injured, Tilly not in the squad due to his fitness issues. So that is what it is, and you can't carry more than seven wingers. So we are where we are on that and Let's see what Brendan Rodgers decides on the night. Um, just to touch back on Kyogo very briefly. So there's a bit of flat coming his way at this moment in time. You could debate that he's off for him. He's only got one goal in the last six, and that was against Aberdeen in the 6 now win. So you could debate that he's off for him because he's not. if he's not scoring goals, he's not doing much, Kyogo. So mm -hmm. that's fair to say. But like any striker at any level of the game, surely you're only good as good as the service you get. And he's not getting much service at the moment. I'd like to see the stats on that, even if he went for a four, six week period in this year compared to the exact four, six week period last year. What was the chance creation that was Kyogo was getting on the end of, whether they were goals or not? It's I think it's plummeted like you wouldn't believe. Um, there's a totally different style of play. There's no you, know, you can get you and Joe were talking about the post match. There's no byline runs and cutbacks for Kyogo, and that's what he thrives on. Um there's not even really much in the way of you know defence splitting passes that Kyogo's able to get on the end of so those are these two, those are the two main things and he'll get you goals every single time every single game if you if you play on balls like that if you don't play balls like that you're going to get exactly what we're getting so for me it's, there's, there's nothing on Kyogo it's not like he's fluffing his lines or anything like yeah. that yeah you're right it's, it's not like he's missing chances no. he's just not getting chances yeah. and it's not 
It's not due to his lack of movement or his lack of runs. He makes the run each and every time. You've never been game. You know, it was uh, Scales that was coming out and Scales is you know, usually decent at kind of seeing that kind of movement. But Kyo was making the move and it was almost like every single fan in the ground saw it and Scales was the only guy that didn't. So, you know, we're seeing that he's making the runs. The players have to match it and take that risk. Take that, you know, slightly riskier pass um, and you'll be you'll be backed on it. You know, the player who's taking the risky pass will be backed on it because we want to take chances. Yeah, and Kyogo's proven against Lazio at home as well as Atletico. He can score at this level if given the right service. So uh, hopefully he gets those opportunities to tuck one or two away uh, in the Olympic Stadium. Let's look at Lazio. So I've said we've had a bad weekend in terms of prepping for it. For this game, theirs has been worse. They lost 2-1 to Salernitina, who are rock bottom of Serie A. And actually, uh, digging further into it, Lazio haven't won in the last three games. It's two draws, sorry, two defeats and a draw. So they're not in great shape. That said, <laughs> you joked about it before we come on in here. Celtic will always find a way to yeah. uh, make a team who are struggling look really good. And the hope is, though, that they are out of sorts at this moment in time. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the hope. I mean... <clears throat> We were in that stadium in March. It's a it's a class stadium, um, and it can really create a, an atmosphere and, and, a, and a a level of noise that you know Lazio will be wanting to, to play in a favour. I know it's last night. Roma were playing on it last night, two nights before the game. I think that's poor. Eh? That's the the joys of sharing a stadium, I suppose. Uh, what's what's the alternative? Well, I don't know. Judge that. I'm just what I complain about it. Um, but yeah, it's you know they're they're going to have their, their fans behind them, and we've just got to you know keep our composure and. You know, the longer it goes on, you know, it's the kind of first 20 minutes, cliche. Um, if you don't give them any chances after in the first 20 minutes, their fans start to get on their back, you know, that, that kind of idea. So that, that's that's the hope, certainly. Yeah. I mentioned the fact that they've had two, two defeats and a draw in the last three games. Didn't realise till, till right now, <laughs> breaking news. One of those defeats was Bologna, beat them 1-0, and it was Lewis Ferguson, no less, that put them at the sword. I think it was a record goal of some kind, eh? Yeah. What was record about it? Don't know. Don't know. I'll look that off the main show. <laughs> Great prep. So they are... They are out of sorts, there's no getting away from it. You're, you're, you're either winning games or you're not, and they're not. The the offshoot of that, though, or the offset, is that they have won their last Champions League game. They beat uh, Feyenoord. They beat Feyenoord 1-0 on match day four. They're in a decent position. They're on seven points versus our one. So they know even a draw gets them you know, Champions, uh, European football after Christmas, but they'll go all out for the one that would really help them. Yeah, they'll, they'll also know from you know having experienced the kind of football team we are, that if they're going to play cat and at you and let us come at them, that's a long, long ninety minutes and probably not a very successful ninety minutes. Albeit uh, Italians are the masters at it. Yeah, the cat and at you indeed. Uh, as mentioned, we've done it before in Rome. You know, beat Lazio two one uh, back in twenty nineteen. Paddy was there. Paddy for the show was at that one. James Forrest getting the goal as I mentioned, and Olivier and Cham and. It, it can be done, but what you need on the night is maybe a wee bit of luck. You know, absolutely and. You need guys like your goalkeeper, Fraser Foster, on that night to have, I don't know if the game of your life is a bit dramatic, but certainly to come out with the, the big moments. Uh, he had that big moment and Olivier and Cham showed the composure to, to score the winner when it came his way. Celtic have got the players that can do that. You know, of course, we know that Saturday was a bit disappointing against Motherwell, but we've seen these guys, I don't want to say it their worst, but we've seen these guys have poor games, but we've also seen them light up the stage for Celtic. You think about guys like Kyogo, Matt O'Reilly, Callum McGregor on his day. Mikey Johnston on his day. I'm getting in there. Mm -hmm. There's guys in this Celtic side though, um, all kidding aside, who are absolutely capable of, of being match winners and being big performance and big performers. And if you want to do it, there's no time like the present. No, and that's I know you're kinda of joking, but I think that's what it is. A, a chance for Mikey, because you've seen what he's done for Ireland or the different in the last maybe five, six games. He's stepping inside and taking his shots, and that's all you're really looking for him to do, and then see if Gil can pick up a spill or something like that. Um, there's definitely enough talent in, in there. We showed that in the first game. You know, there's talent in there to, to beat this team. Go looking back at the you know the Fraser Foster, Livingston, Cham, James Forrest kind of game. Of those two legs of that tie, I actually couldn't believe they, they didn't win any of those games. You know, there was a lot of luck involved in that. But I would say Fraser Foster was the big big difference. You know, I mean, it was outstanding, particularly the, the leg in Rome. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got a situation though where Lazio came to Celtic Park and we outplayed them. Mm -hmm. There's no debate in that. Celtic were really impressive on the night. But just that mental lapse at the in the dying embers of the game, that that caution. I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? You just need full concentration above all else. You know the, the ability and the quality and, and how you set up is of course important. But if you switch off mentally for just a second, even against a team who are out of sorts themselves, you will get punished. You know, look at the maths on that. If if we maintain our confidence 
I think there's a bit of kind of hereditary naivety that comes at the Celtic for that kind of thing. Just, it, the, every single player in that park knew that it's concentration for the full 90 minutes plus injury. But the maths on that is if we hold that to a draw, or even, even if you look at Palmer's ghost goal kind of thing, if you hold them to the draw, we're in 2.75. It's a different story. Is that the right maths? Two points off their seven. And one point on ours? Yeah. Okay, so we're back in it. There you go. Hypothetically. No, you're right. I mean, it, it would have made such a huge difference, but it's woulda, coulda, shoulda again for Celtic yeah. in Europe, isn't it? The one thing I want to ask, you know, we can certainly learn from different campaigns and the players might well develop individually and be better next time around. What about this time around? We've already played four games and I'd like to think that the players have learned from those four games in different ways, painful lessons as, as they might have been. We went to final match day one, played very, very well, but ultimately a couple of questionable red cards, maybe one, maybe not so much, but, you know, dubious decisions in some way, shape or form and we've fallen short on the night, we've lost that one. Lazio, we've just spoken about, lack of concentration and at the end of a game you've dominated, you lose that one. Atletico at home, Celtic really showed the best of themselves, particularly in that first half. Now, I appreciate Atletico changed their, their setup in the second half and, and they're a very impressive side with very impressive individuals. But Celtic showed, at least in spells, they can go toe-to-toe with some of the best teams around. And Atletico are one of the best teams around. I, I, don't, I don't think they'll go and win the Champions League, but I think they'll get to the quarters at least. Mm-hmm. I think they've got that within them. Um, and then, as, as mentioned, the away leg against Atletico, you can dress it up whatever way you want. The dies made a sending off completely changes the complex of that game or the complexion of that game and losing the second goal in the stroke of half time it then all goes downhill from there but there are lessons to be learned there's some good, bad and indifferent stuff across those four games and the mental side I keep touching on it because I think it's so important at this level you can get away with things in Scotland that you just don't get away with here what do you think the mindset of the players will be approaching this knowing absolutely that it's win or bust Um. <laughs> I think every player, if they can get into a team that's in the Champions League, it's really just shown what they can do to, to a wider audience. You know, looking at guys like Matt O'Reilly, Alistair Johnson um, in particular, maybe Kyogo, things like that. You know, they, they, they thrive on playing in these, you know, big level uh, tournaments. So they should just play with that in mind and just enjoy it. It has to be that because if you're into it on a kind of a, a nervous, you know, approach to thinking that, you know, we've underperformed the last four games that kind of negativity doesn't work and that won't exist in Rogers dressing room anyway so I, th- I think it'll be a positive approach and it, it, it absolutely has to be it's all you can do yeah to to take a maxim from around European coach Michael Beale are you saying take off the handbrake oof what are you uh, saying a genius just go for it. Yeah. but I do think to an extent that'll be the message whether it's gung-ho from the start I'm not quite uh, promoting but I do think at some point you just need to take off the shackles and go for it mm-hmm. as I say there's nothing else for it it's, it's one or bust so you might as well go out on your shield and all that kind of stuff um, and yeah just give it your all and, and see where you land and on that James what do you think the scoreline is going to be? Keeping in mind that I know well I was just going to say if we want to genuinely progress the Champions League uh, rather than Europa and <laughs> been beggars can't be choosers and all that uh, we need to beat the scoreline that they beat us by. So they beat us 2-1 at Celtic Park. Don't know that's what you're thinking. 3-2. So we won't get the two-goal margin. we win 3-2. Does that not mean ours is better than them? How does that go? Three away, three away goals, maybe. Don't know. Yeah. Must cool. must start doing some research before these shows. Informed podcasters. Um, I've said 2-0 for a time, so I'm going to stick with it uh, f- You know, for today. Um, Celtic away in Europe, clean sheet, aye? That's right. right. I've got complete... when, was, when was the last one of those? Hey, no time like the present, as I said. So I think Celtic can... Listen, Celtic are capable of all results. You know, we could go out and take a tanking. We could go and get a a real morale boost and win. We could go and draw the game. There's just, all options are on the table at this moment in time. So I'm often accused of letting my heart rule my head when it comes to these predictions. And I'm okay with that. Looks like it. That's exactly what I'm going with. I'm going for 2-0 Celtic on the night. James, your final thoughts ahead of Tuesday night's big kickoff? Just die. You know, it's, it's a chance to... Um Get back the points we should have got. You know, we should have been, we should be a lot further on here. Um, I know we can discuss project players and the lack of calibre signers and all that stuff, but we're here now. So I just want us to go and perform and give a good showing of ourselves and give us something to celebrate in this tournament. Yeah, give us something to cheer, absolutely. So Celtic are back in Rome looking for a repeat of that 2019 result to keep our slim hopes of European football after Christmas alive. Can they do it? Yes. Will they do it? 
Also yes, but also maybe. Either way, we'll be back here on the Celtic Exchange Plus after the game with the final whistle show. In the meantime, from myself and James, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the game. Mm-hmm.